Hello, my friends. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, the Spirit that generates children to the Father as He generated the Lord Jesus. And He wants to generate you as well who are watching us now and haven't yet had an encounter with Him. You still haven't surrendered yourself, given your life. You still haven't humbled yourself before Him. He wants to make you His child, a child of God. And those who are His children don't need anybody to prove or try to prove to them that they are His children. Not at all. The powerful voice of the Holy Spirit speaks in the innermost, saying, You are my child. You are my child. <laughs> oh, how I wish everybody had this experience, this glorious experience, because if this happened, this world would be much different. Anyways, I wanted to speak to you today about something that the Holy Spirit gave me a while ago. Uh, as last week we spoke about the thoughts, do you remember? We spoke a lot about the thoughts. However, I wanted to, to get your attention to these words here, which are the words of God spoken through the Apostle Peter. He said like this, Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. Roaring lion. Roaring. Seeking whom he may devour. Pay attention. When a person is of God, born of the Holy Spirit, born of God, as it was the case of the Lord Jesus, who is the best and greatest example of that, then the devil cannot prevail against this person because a child of God has the thoughts of the Father permanently in their mind. And when the devil comes, he knows how to resist, how to overcome those thoughts, because they are God's children. They are guided by the Spirit of God. Whoever is a child of God is guided by his Spirit. It's like what is written, that those who are born of God overcome the world. They overcome the devil and everything. Now, when the person is not born of God, for sure the devil, the devil stays around trying to find a gap to enter that person's life. And he looks for those who are not sober. But what does it mean to be sober? Bishop, what does sobriety mean? A person who is sober is someone who is not trying to get attention to themselves. It's a person that is not trying to show off, that is trying to show off and uncontrolled and unbalanced, emotionally speaking. It's a person who is not trying to show the ostentatious way they live their life. So, a person who is sober is someone who has common sense. It's a person that has balance. 
and that knows how to position themselves in life. They know how to behave. Why? Because they are someone who is sober. So, the Apostle Peter says to the church, to the Christians, he is speaking here to those people who are following the Lord Jesus and that sometimes they face serious problems in their way of being and behaving. People who try to show off. You, you can see, for example, when you go on social media, people who are trying to show off. You see a lot of people that place for them. You know how it is. They try to show off. But this is the reality. You can verify that these are people who are not sober. Because those who are sober, they are not interested in somebody else's opinion. They are interested in behaving according to their sobriety, according to their balanced way of living their life. They are not trying to show off. No, they are someone who is simple, decent, someone who is sober. When a person is not sober, then the devil gets them. For example, just a simple example here. You see many times on the news people who tried to take a selfie, right? To take a really nice selfie right on the edge of a cliff. That's what the devil likes the most. Right on the edge of a cliff. The person, out of their own free will, decided in their mind, in their thought, to want to take a different photograph, a very attractive one, to get attention the attention of the world, to have a lot of people following them. And they lost their life. They fell off and died. Which means, a person who is seen in such situation, in a cliff like that, in order to take a selfie, showing themselves, showing their beauty or their courage, and they die this way, I ask you, was this person sober? Not at all. Was a spiritual person that had their thoughts connected to God's? Not at all. They had their thoughts inclined towards the glamour of life, trying to seek attention from the world on social media. So the devil here the, the text says, be sober, be vigilant. We always have to be vigilant to not fall into the temptation of not being sober. Because your adversary, it continues, your adversary, the devil, your enemy, he walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, those whom he can devour. And who can he devour? Those who are not God's children. Those who are not God's children. This is the reality. Because those who are God's children, they have the stamp of the Holy Spirit on them. They have the seal of the Holy Spirit. And that one, no one can touch. They are mine, says the Lord. This is my son, this is my daughter, my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased. So, my dear friend, see how this is extremely important for you to invest your mind, your heart, your body, all your life, 
in doing, in seeking to be a child of God. Spirit, soul, and body. Or body, soul, and spirit. Your trinity has to be placed entirely on the altar. Entirely. So that from the altar, the power of the Holy Spirit will come and receive you. If you place on the altar your spirit, your body, your money, your properties, but you don't put your soul on there, then the altar is not going to receive it. The altar will reject it. It has to be a hundred percent. It's all of yours for God's all. See that Jesus said that the Father doesn't give the Holy Spirit by measure. It's a hundred percent. Totally. And do you think that he will accept 99%? Not at all. It's all for all. Isn't it like this in marriage? When you love somebody, don't you also want to be loved by that person 100%? When you love someone, do you accept to share them with somebody else? No, it's all for all. Isn't it like this? Body, soul, and spirit as well. So, in the same way, it's concerning God. If you want the Holy Spirit, who is God's totality, then you have to surrender your totality. So, He has to be a priority. He has to be the first. He has to be the first in your life, in your entire life, before your mother, before your father, husband, wife, children, grandchildren, house, money, everything, everything. Remember, now, now you understand when Jesus said like this, he said to his disciples, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me which means that we have to love him above our mother and father. Whoever loves their daughter, their son, their brothers and sisters more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves their life will lose it. But whoever loves me, my father will dwell in them. So, it's all for all. This is the thought that you have to feed within you. Instead of exposing yourself to the world, the world does not want to do anything with you. The world wants to use you and then throw you away like a tissue paper, like a, a tissue to clean the nose. The world wants to do with you exactly that to blow its nose on you and then throw you away. You know that, don't you? Or if you didn't know, you know this now. So, be discreet. Be discreet. Be sober. Sober. Be balanced, moderate, so that you will not allow yourself to be caught by your adversary, by our adversary, which is the devil, okay? Take care of that. You who are watching me right now, be careful with your thoughts. Be careful with your thoughts. Lead your thoughts according to the thoughts of God. Place your thoughts in God's thoughts and you are going to be happy. You are not going to depend on people or things in order to be happy. You will depend exclusively on God Himself. He will fulfill His promise, His word, His thought in your life. If you drink from His word, He will make you think properly 
according to what you have to think in order for you to have a happy life, a life that is worth it, a life with God. Did you understand? Think about that, my dear friend. Invest in your mind, in your intelligence, in your abilities. Invest in your thoughts, connecting them, combining them according to God's thoughts, and you are going to be happy. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow at the same time through this social media platform here, okay? Until then.